Good day or evening, dear participants. In this lecture number two, let us focus and once again discuss the curriculum transformation, equality, diversity, and inclusiveness. As we alluded to already, curriculum transformation is the paradigm shift by which educational curricula are brought up to date, reconstructed, and rebuilt to reflect changes in the social, technological, economic, and political arenas. Curriculum transformation is a process of designing, developing, and delivering educational programs, classes, and resources, which requires considering the ever-shifting requirements imposed by society, as well as the specific requirements of various categories. Curriculum transformation is the driving force to change and efficiently bring effective and accurate knowledge for better outcomes. The curriculum transformation process must establish a climate in which all students, irrespective of their identities, ethnicities, or abilities, are allowed to thrive and flourish. Educators have the opportunity to establish an environment that invites students from all walks of life and encourages them to develop their greatest potential by fostering diversity, inclusion, and equality in the classroom. What is diversity, equality, and inclusiveness? As we already defined these three important concepts in the first lecture, diversity, equality, and inclusion are terms that describe how people from different backgrounds, identities, and experiences are involved and treated in various settings. Diversity is the representation or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social and ethnic backgrounds and of different genders, sexual orientations, etc. Equality is about giving every individual the same opportunity to fulfill their individual potential through taking part in activities without discrimination in any form. Inclusion is the act or culture of welcoming, including, supporting, respecting, and valuing all individuals and groups. Equality, diversity, and inclusivity aims to eradicate prejudice and discrimination and ensure fair treatment and access to opportunities for all. Furthermore, equality, diversity, and inclusiveness in the classroom expose students to diverse points of view, which in turn inspires innovation and originality within the student. Students have a greater chance of developing critical thinking skills and coming up with creative answers to challenges if they are given the opportunity to learn about a variety of cultures, experiences, and opinions. An atmosphere that encourages variety, inclusion, and equality is beneficial to every single student. It is important that the curriculum includes various multicultural views to cultivate a knowledge of and appreciation for the many unique ways that people live their lives. Take note that it is crucial to incorporate transformative pedagogical approaches that promote equality, diversity, and inclusion into the curriculum. This will ensure that every child has the same opportunity to achieve academically and develop personally. The following are three ideas that can be used to enhance the impact of equality, diversity, and inclusiveness. Firstly, use of diverse resources with varied images. It is essential that people of various races, ethnicities, cultures, genders, and abilities can recognize themselves in the materials used in educational settings. When young learners can see themselves reflected in classroom resources, it helps to create an environment that is more relevant and inclusive for learning. Secondly, professional development opportunities for multicultural perspectives. It is imperative that educators and teachers have access to professional development opportunities that will assist them in becoming knowledgeable in equality, diversity, and inclusivity. Teachers benefit from these professional development opportunities since they broaden their worldviews and teach them to embrace diversity. Thirdly, partner with community organizations for monitoring. When it comes to enhancing the use of equity, diversity, and inclusivity in the classroom, community organizations may be able to give helpful resources and support. These organizations and educational institutions may be able to assist in providing further networking opportunities. Take note that in this context, a community organization is a group formed by individuals with shared interests or goals within a specific area, aiming to address and advocate for their members' needs through collaboration and resource provision. These organizations enhance community engagement, support local development, and empower individuals to participate in their community's improvement and governance. Let us reflect a little bit now. 
as curriculum transformation is the driving force to educational and nationwide changes and efficiently brings effective and accurate knowledge for better outcomes. What questions should we start asking ourselves? What comes to my immediate thinking is, one, what experiences related to a transformed curriculum in my country are? Two, what examples can I share related to curriculum transformation? Three, how can I leverage my own privilege to support others to be also successful? Reflect in writing on these three questions using the Gibbs Reflective Cycle Guide, which will be shared with you in this module. Compile your reflection in the e-journal available within the e-learning platform in use in this self-paced online course. A video will be shared with you demonstrating how to create your electronic journal. Share your reflections with your colleagues at work and also share them on the Community of Practice platform, which will be shared with you. Share your reflections with your colleagues at work and also share them on the Community of Practice platform, which will be shared with you. In conclusion, in this lecture, we have discussed the importance of curriculum transformation, equality, diversity, and inclusiveness in education. We have seen how these concepts can enhance the learning outcomes and experiences of students from different backgrounds, identities, and abilities. We have also explored some ideas and strategies to incorporate these values into our teaching practices and resources. I hope you have found this lecture informative and engaging and that you will apply some of the insights and suggestions in your own educational settings. The next lecture, number three, will focus on challenges faced by teachers in curriculum transformation. See you during lecture three and thank you for your attention. I look forward to reading your reflections in your e-journal. If you have any questions or comments, please access the discussion forum under the thread on lecture two of module one. You will get answers from your peers and feel free to answer other participants' questions to cement your knowledge and skills development. I thank you.